Okay, welcome to Easy Anatomy. I'm going to talk to you now about uh, submandibular apps and sublingual salivary glands. Okay, we talked in uh, video number one about salivary glands. Uh, we talked about parotid, now submandibular and sublingual. Submandibular and sublingual. So, to understand the anatomy, let us first like draw this myelohyoid line. Okay, and here is hyoid bone. And as you know, here is myelohyoid muscle attached to myelohyoid line and to the hyoid bone. Then from the greater horn, if you remember, we have hyoid glossus muscle which extend to the tongue so this is high glossus muscle okay to the posterior third of the tongue so the location or the anatomical position of submandibular salivary gland in the submandibular fossa okay uh, has two parts the superficial part which is superficial to myelohyoid muscle and the hyoglossus then there is deep part the deep part extend between the two muscles the deep part extend between the two muscles and from there you will have the duct submandibular duct and submandibular duct extend to the floor of the mouth and open finally in what in in sub lingual papilla medial to sublingual gland so sublingual gland is located lateral to the sublingual papilla so this is sublingual gland so again this is superficial part of the gland then we have the deep part extended between myelohyoid and the hyoglossus. Myelohyoid. And this is hyoglossus muscle. Hyoglossus muscle. Okay. Superficial part. And here is the deep part. And here this is Wharton duct. Wharton duct. Uh, important relation what are important relation to the gland the gland covered by skin fascia and then there is cervical branch of facial nerve descend superficial to it and the nerve to myelohyoid so superficial to the gland keep in mind that you might during the dissection dissection you might find cervical branch of facial and also nerve to myelohyoid muscle nerve to myelohyoid okay the deep part of the gland is located and the duct located between two nerves lingual nerve and hypoglossal nerve lingual nerve and hypoglossal nerve the lingual nerve if you remember lingual nerve has important relation to the duct is going to hook around the duct until it reaches to the tongue this is lingual nerve so the lingual nerve is very closely related has close relation to the duct so this is lingual nerve hypoglossal nerve again is going traveling between myelohyoid muscle and hyoglossus muscle and also is going to cross blue the level of the duct so this is hypoglossal nerve hypoglossal nerve so keep in mind that there are several nerves related to the gland you have lingual nerve descend and hook around turn around the duct and hypoglossal nerve traveling between myelohyoid and hypoglossus muscle below the duct okay nerve supply of the gland 
is coming from this nerve. What is this nerve? This is corda tympani, which is a branch of facial nerve, corda tympani. So corda tympani is a branch of facial nerve carrying parasympathetic fibers, joining lingual nerve, then the preganglionic fibers is going to stop by submandibular ganglion, postganglionic fibers is going to the gland, and some postganglionic fiber is going to rejoin the lingual nerve until it reaches to where to sublingual gland. So corda tympani is going to supply submandibular and sublingual gland. So facial nerve sending the corda tympani joining lingual, then preganglionic fiber is is going to stop by submandibular ganglion, sub mandibular ganglion and from there postganglionic fibers is going to the submandibular gland and to sublingual salivary gland okay so warton duct which is traveling up to the floor of the mouth okay medial to the sublingual fold or sublingual gland is going to open into sublingual babilla. If you notice the course is against the gravity and is long, is long course. That's why it is more subjected to inflammation and stone formation. In addition, sublingual gland has several ducts, like dozens, dozens of ducts, maybe 12 ducts, open into sublingual fold, lateral to Wharton duct, and some of these ducts opening into Wharton duct. Some ducts from sublingual open into the Wharton duct. Okay, so sublingual gland, sublingual gland has ducts, several ducts open into sublingual fold. Okay mucous membrane covering the gland some join Wharton duct some are going to join Wharton duct or submandibular duct so again sublingual gland has several ducts open into the sublingual fold so you need to pay attention to the difference between fold and caruncle or papilla the papilla or caruncle receiving Wharton duct the fold receive this ducts from sublingual and some of them open into the Wharton duct. Okay. We talked about the nerve supply, which is called the tympani. Okay, from facial. How about blood supply? The blood supply you have facial artery, which closely related to the gland. Facial artery is traveling at the posterior part of the gland, then come between the gland and submandibular fossa and send the glandular branches so the arterial supply arteries branches from coming from facial and some branches from lingual facial and lingual veins the same is going to facial vein okay lymph nodes lymphatic drainage is going to be what Submandibular lymph nodes. Submandibular lymph nodes. Very simple. When you look at the anatomy of submandibular gland and sublingual gland, uh, most important information nerve supply, which is corda tympani coming from facial. This is a parasympathetic. Okay. And it's a relation to important nerves like lingual nerve, hypoglossal nerve, and covered or crossed superficially by cervical branch of facial and nerve to myelohyoid. Uh, one important thing is a relation to facial artery. And finally, the duct is long, has long course, and against the gravity, it is more subjected to sial adenitis, okay, inflammation. One last thing, it's a close relation to lingual nerve. So if there is any a surgical intervention to remove a stone from the duct we need to pay attention to its close relation to the lingual nerve 
What would happen if there is injury of lingual nerve? Lingual nerve carrying general sensation from tongue, in addition also carrying corda tympani. And the corda tympani has two functions, parasympathetic function to supply sublingual and submandibular, and also carrying test sensation. So keep in mind, if there is injury, here is lingual nerve carrying general sensation from anterior to third of the tongue. Corda tympani has test sensation, and also provide parasympathetic or secrete motor fiber to these two glands. So if there is injury happen here, you need to pay attention to the fact that this is might lead to loss of taste sensation and also loss of secrete motor fibers to the salivary glands. Thank you.